Vedanta Upanishad. But uh, the karma theory and the theory of creation, we can see Mahatattva and all other things there. So this is from Sankhyaoli, Prakriti Purusha, Prakriti Swama Vashtabhya. But only the difference is, the classical Sankhya philosophy, they have no concept of Ishwara other than consciousness. We have like Ishwara qualified with Maya, Maya Shakti. Sankhya, Sankhya philosophy has no Ishwara concept. So that is the difference. Therefore, uh, philosophically we call the classical Sankhya as Nirishwara Sankhya. And then comes Seshwara Sankhya, the Sankhya philosophy with uh, Ishwara, that is Yoga Darshana. The Yoga Darshana and the Sankhya, if you see, Yoga Darshana is a uh, an elaboration of Sankhya, especially on sadhanas. The sadhana is elaborated in Yoga Darshan. And the theory of creation, which is very important for uh, Yoga Darshana as well as Vedanta and Tantra, uh, Kashmir Shaiva Tantra, and all other uh, Agama systems. Even Buddhism, Jainism, they all took something from Sankhya. So, uh, we must uh, study Sankhya if we want to study philosophy, any of the inter-school of philosophy. Even Nastika and Nastika both. So, this is the Ishwara philosophy, Ishwara concept. Or Ishwara is the creator of the universe is basically Vedantic philosophy and Sankhya says Prakriti is the material cause of creation. In the presence of consciousness Prakriti creates, Prakriti creates itself. So consciousness has no role in creation, only its presence in the presence, uh, the creation happens itself. So, there are so many things related to this. First, we see why this Sankhya is called Sankhya. Because there is a confusion uh, when we say Sankhya, it's, uh, the word uh, gives a meaning like connected to Sankhya, enumeration. So what is the connection with uh, Sankhya and the Sankhya? And in uh, Bhagavad Gita when we see, uh, the second chapter is called uh, Sankhya Yoga. It means it is Jnana Yoga. Uh, it means uh, sometimes before, maybe in the historical days, they used, the, instead of Jnana, the word Sankhya uh, to show that they are very philosophical or like, you no know, very uh, scientific, you no, know, something like that. The Sankhya Yoga means Jnana Yoga. So, Sankhya and yoga, uh, Jnana become synonymous. So, how this word derives? Uh, it comes from Sankhya only, some Kya. So Kya is a root and with some, some added into that. So Sankhya means Samyak Nyayade, which is uh, clearly known as we with the de definition, with the, the character, what we know very clearly, if something but we uh, try to know very clearly. It is called Sankhya. So, in that uh, uh, numbers also called Sankhya. 
because when we say number 1, 2, 3, 4, it's very clear. So there is nothing to discuss on that. So therefore, this Sankhya and the Sankhya, the, after Sankhya it comes Sankhya. So the philosophy which uh, very clearly derives or uh, gives the definitions of the creation, the creator or whatever, the Idriyas and all those. So therefore, Samyak Nyayande Idi Sankhya. So they have no, 25 tattvas, principles. So these tattvas are 25, so they enumerate 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. So it is very clear, like uh, in science we have all the uh, methodology and uh, the formulas and then definitions and then combinations, all these are there in science. Similarly, the Sankhya philosophy also has all this. So as a philosophical system, Sankhya has, uh, uh, Sankhya uh, made it very clear to understand the depth of all that, all what Sankhya says. Like we say something in, uh, in words, but uh, we have no definitions. Uh, we don't know how it comes and why, but Sankhya has everything clear. So what anything they say, they say very clearly. Therefore, this Sankhya philosophy also called Tarkika philosophy. And Tarkika Nyaya and Vaisheshika, they are also Tarkikas. But uh, before them, Sankhya philosophy was Tarkika because in Bhashya, Shankara Bhashya, Many places, uh, Shankaracharya mentions Sankhya philosophy of Tartikas. Why? Because they gave all this definition very clearly and then they have so many arguments with that. Now, another thing is, even though Sankhya, Yoga and all these uh, orthodox uh, schools of philosophies, they take Veda as Pramana, as a valid proof, but they are not fully following Vedas. It's not word by word they follow. They take as a, uh, as a what you say, uh, they believe in Veda and they take uh, as authentic uh, creation of uh, no, uh, that uh, Veda is our uh, philosophically and all of that, we have so much uh, connection with Veda, as Agama Pramana they take, but they are not uh, completely following Veda. Therefore, in uh, Vedanta philosophy, we deny Sankhya philosophy, because they say uh, Prakriti, the nature, is everything, the form of whatever we see as a creation, is uh, Prakriti and Purusha as a Chaitanya. Here the Purusha means Chaitanya, Chaitanya. So Chaitanya, the consciousness has nothing to do with that. So this is what makes uh, uh, so much difference with the Vedantic philosophy. Because Vedantic philosophy says, and material cause and efficient cause or whatever, there in the creation is all from Chaitanya, the manifestation of Chaitanya as Vivarta. The Chaitanya itself manifests and itself it is seen. And this Chaitanya consciousness is nor born or no changes are there. It's always the same, with the same amount. This is all pervading. It has no parts. So this is all the definition and uh, this all uh, comes in Vedanta's consciousness. But here they say uh, in Prakriti, Prakriti has two, three parts, especially Sattva Rajas Tamasam. So Sattva Rajas Tamasam, Samya Avastha Prakriti. In Sankhya Sutra, uh, one chapter 161 Sutra, it says the definition of Prakriti. Sattva Rajas Tamas, there is these three gunas, there samyavastha equilibrium 
of all these three gunas is called prakriti. So prakriti is nothing but three gunas, gunatraya. And when it is in equilibrium state, it is called prakriti. And when it has some manifestation, some uh, vibration, some functions, so this uh, comes out as a creation. So that we will discuss later in detail. So these are the basic things. And now, why we need these philosophies or why we need uh, to study this uh, philosophy? The first thing is, as all other philosophies say, is uh, trivita dukkha nivritti. It means we want to get rid of all these three forms of pain, sorrow, suffering. So three forms of suffering, physical and mental that, that is also there, mental and physical. And then comes the sufferings from other beings, Adi Bhautika and the suffering from Adhyatma, the nature and then from physically and mentally. So we have so many sufferings, different types of suffering. And we want to get rid of this suffering. So we uh, try to find some way out to get rid of this suffering. So this is how the philosophy comes up. So philosophy helps you to understand the suffering, what is suffering. And then you do some sadhana, there's some practice, you know, we follow that, then we go out of that. So this is the uh, goal of philosophy, the aim of philosophy. So here the karika also starts from there. Now the karika means a special type of shloka. We say some, uh, sometimes we say shlokas or sometimes we say karikas and vartikas. These are like a shloka only. In the, in the meter it is there. But karika is a special shloka, it like sutras. Alpaksharatve sadi bhagwartha jnapaka shloka. This is the definition we give. Karikas mostly like sutras, but in the form of slogans. Alpakshara, in, uh, uh, with the minimum words, they say much. So then it is like sutra, we have minimum words and uh, say uh, much about that, all the uh, theories, uh, uh, contents in one, one sutra. So this is also like that. Then it is called karikas. Like we have Mandukya karika, Sit karika, it looks the same shloka, but uh, it named as a uh, named as a karika is because it is very uh, special kind of shlokas. So Sankhya karika. I already uh, told you uh, the author of this uh, textbook is Ishwara Krishna. His name is Ishwara Krishna. He was uh, uh, maybe uh, AD 2nd uh, century or before that he lived. Because Shankaracharya, he also quotes from Ishwara Krishna's Sankhya Karika. So he quotes in two, two, three places. The Karika itself, what we are going to study. So it means uh, it was before. It was very famous even before Shankaracharya. So anyway, uh, this we study because uh, here we have yogis, uh, yoga philosophy and uh, the Vedantins all are there. So <laughs> it is useful for uh, yogis as well as Vedantins. So because I have, oh, I, am, uh, I, I am as a Vedantin, so Vedanta is my first philosophy and then the second philosophy is my yoga philosophy. So uh, I have both the connections. So I will refer in both sides how it is useful in yoga and how it is useful in Vedanta. So I have done an uh, elaborate study on Sankhya, although when we learned Sankhya philosophy with the Karika in the beginning when we started the study, uh, it was normal, we just studied uh, 
uh, for, the, for the sake of study because we have to study it for the further. But after that, when we I did uh, some research, research in Yoga Sutras, I found without Sangya it cannot be understood because Yoga Sutra itself is a separate philosophy. So then uh, my interest uh, grew in that level. So then I again uh, studied Sangya philosophy with the sutras and all the um, uh, Sanskrit Vyakhyas uh, and commentaries and sub commentaries. So uh, I have done an elaborate uh, study. Then I wrote something about this. And this, uh, what you have, this manual also, we did some research and made it very simple to understand all these things. So you can see in that. So then both sides, then I found after the studying Sankhya philosophy, I could understand uh, Vedanta more deeply or uh, in some places, like uh, especially in uh, Bhagavad Gita, I could understand Bhagavad Gita after Sankhya very clear. Because Bhagavad Gita is not, not always following the Upanishad theory. There are some other theories. So these theories can be understood. Based on science. And of course, the Agama, we say Agama uh, philosophies, Agama school of philosophies. They are now called as Tantra philosophy. So we have three types of Agamas Shaiva Agamas, Shakti Agamas, and Vaishnava Agamas. So Shakti Tantra, Shaiva Tantra, and Vaishnava Tantras. So all these three Tantras, all together, they follow Sankhya philosophy. And Buddhism also follows this. So it is very important to basically know the structure of Sankhya. So that is uh, and, uh, and this small introdu introduction for this. And we have so many other uh, textbook on Sankhya other than this. First we study Sankhya Karika. Then uh, we can study Sankhya Sutras. 523 sutras are there in six chapters. The Kapila Maharshi, the author of the sutras, believed to be Kapila Maharshi. And then uh, you have Sankhya Tattva Samasa Sutra. This is also made by Kapila Maharshi only. It is a summary of all these 523 sutras. So Tattva Samasa Sutra, that is also very famous. And then Sankhya Sara, Sankhya Paribhasha, and Sankhya Tattva Pradipika, and then Sankhya Tattva Kaumudi, the Sankhya Tattva Kaumudi of Vajaspati Mishra, that is also there. It is also very famous. We uh, study with the uh, Sankhya Tattva Kaumudi of this Sankhya Kari. Here, we are not going to take any of this. Uh, commentaries only with the slogans, the basic uh, structure of Sankhya we will try to understand. And then if anybody is interested, more interested, they can, uh, uh, I think, whenever you want to study, they can study that. Okay? So, Gauda Bhasha Bhasha also is there. Gauda Bhasha Bhasha also there, you know, based on this. This, uh, this has, uh, like Sankhya Tattva Kaumati, Sankhya Karika has, like uh, four uh, Sanskrit uh, commentaries. First is Sankhya Tattva Kaumudi and Sankhya Chandrika, then Mathara Vritti, one of the oldest uh, uh, commentary, Mathara Vritti, then Gaudapada Bhashya. Sankhya Tattva Kaumudi by Vajaspati Mishra, yeah. this, uh, then uh, Mathara Vritti by Mathara and Sankhya Chandrika by one uh, famous uh, Acharya, uh, his name is Sam Chandra, uh, Sam Chandra is his name. And then Gaudapada Bhashya, in the name of Gaudapada Acharya. This is a very simple. Actually, Gaudapada Bhashya and Mathara Vritti, if you see, Gaudapada Bhashya is a, like a summary of Mathara Vritti. Mathara Vritti is elaborated Vritti, Bhashya, and uh, we know Gaudapada Ajara summarized that, it seems, because it has so much uh, uh, similarity in Russia. Yes, uh, so we uh, take first uh, 
శ్లోక కారిక ఐ విల్ చాంట్ ఇన్ టూ పార్ట్ యూ కెన్ ఫాలో ఇట్ దృష్టే మీటర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ శ్లోక ఇస్ ఆర్య the special meter that we have anushta chanda anushta vritta in bhagavad gita and all other this is arya vritta arya is the name of the meter so actually last time we had completed like 10 11 karikas so she, have, she was there but all other new so i will just uh, connect all those దుఃఖత్రయ అభిఘాత జిజ్ఞాస తద అభిఘాతకే హేతౌ అదే ద ఫస్ట్ శ్లోక ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ దుఃఖ దుఃఖ సో ఇట్ స్టార్ట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ దుఃఖ సఫరింగ్ సో హియర్ ద ఆర్గ్యుమెంట్ కమ్స్ హౌ క్యాన్ ఇట్ బి బికాస్ వెన్ వీ స్టార్ట్ సంథింగ్ న్యూ యు షుడ్ యూస్ ఎ గుడ్ వర్డ్ నో like a mangala shabda something very good so now we are starting with the dukha so it means it is not <laughs> fair to start a new test book uh, with the dukha or something uh, the word or related to suffering but uh, actually here he is giving the remedy for dukha it means here dukkha is removed therefore it is uh, good done because it is uh, we are removing the dukkha so he is giving an uh, an uh, sadhana or uh, some means for remove the suffering he says dukkha traya abhighada the word meaning so word meaning ha- it is given there below దుఃఖత్రయ అభిఘాత ఫ్రమ్ ద డిజగ్రీయబల్ అక్యూరెన్స్ అఫెక్షన్ ఆర్ యాక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ద త్రీ ఫోల్డ్ పెయిన్ కాసెస్ ఆఫ్ సఫరింగ్ దుఃఖత్రయ త్రీ ఫోల్డ్ ఆఫ్ పెయిన్ సో త్రీ ఫోల్డ్ వాట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ దర్ ద నెక్స్ట్ పెయిన్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎ గ్రాఫ్ యువన్ కెన్ సీ దట్ ఆధ్యాత్మికం ఆది భౌతికం ఆది దేవికం బికాస్ వీ ఆర్ సో మెనీ సఫరెన్ కౌంట్లెస్ బట్ దోస్ సఫరెన్స్ ఆర్ కేటగరైజ్ ఫార్ ద సేక్ ఆఫ్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఇన్ టీ కేటగరీస్ త్రీ కేటగరీస్ ద ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ ఆధ్యాత్మికం 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 కన్సిస్ట్ ఫిజికల్ అండ్ మెంటల్ physical also mental adhyatma means the related to atma so atma here is body and uh, mind everything is called atma so adhyatmikam the physical and mental then the second one is adhi bhautika from suffering from other beings other all other beings it can be uh, beings other than human being and as well as human beings so we have suffering from human beings other beings so all other beings is called bhautikam bhutas then comes adi devikam 
ദൈവികം ദ നാച്ചുറൽ ലൈക്ക് ഫ്രം സൺ ആൻഡ് ദൻ റെയിൻ വി ഹാവ് ലൈക്ക് വി ആർ സംസൈം യത്തുകെ ഓൾസോ ദി ഹാസ് വി ഹാവ് സഫറിംഗ് ഫ്രം ദാറ്റ് ഫ്രം റെയിൻ ഓൾസോ വി ഹാവ് സഫറിംഗ് ആൻഡ് സൺ സു മച്ച് ഹോട്ട് സൺ സഫറിംഗ് ദർ ആർ സോ മെനി അതർ സൈക്ലോൺ ആൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ അതർ തിങ്സ് സോൾ ഫോർ നാച്ചുറൽ കലാമിറ്റീസ് so suffering from natural calamities so then adhyatma sharirikam and manasikam and this uh, adhyatmika physical and mental suffering has two other uh, causes one swanimittam and other paranimittam is also there hmm? so caused by one's heart <laughs> that is called swanimittam uh, because we never think about ourselves if suffering comes we always think about others how it came we put uh, the reason of suffering on somebody else or uh, something else we don't uh, we don't want to take uh, the responsibility on ourselves so therefore we should understand this there are uh, physical and mental problems like uh, very simple that uh, when we eat something no we have to think if it is eatable it is useful for us and it is going to help my health or whatever we have to think But otherwise you are eating yourself and then suffering from that <laughs> it is caused by yourself and similarly my mental so we uh, unnecessarily think about many things and keep in our mind and carry on with that so we have suffering from that that is cause swanimitta this is very important to understand <coughs> and paranimitta we always know caused by others because it is very easy to know he caused me or she caused me or that caused me so this we know easily so from others actually uh, that we will discuss later and this uh, causes of suffering is always within that is what it is said it seems to be a uh, outside but is not right always based on us so that is called dukha traya abighadat abighadat mani affected by that so so much uh, affected by all these three then when we have so much suffering for so many years a long suffering then there is a chance of thinking the desire to know the cause of this suffering the jignasa then comes the jignasa so desire to know inquiry starts why i am suffering what is the reason for this i have all other facilities and then even then i am having this suffering i don't want suffering why this suffering comes so this sort of uh, thinking starts this is called jignasa like we have brahma jignasa so from there the brahma sutra starts the vedanta starts from dharma jignasa from there the knowledge of religion you know the dharma jignasa starts similarly here dukha traya abhigada jignasa jignasa comes then what jignasa it is tada avakhada ke hetau prevention of that we are we have jignasa desire to know uh, the cause of that suffering and we want prevent that suffering so tada tada avadhata ke to three fold uh, whatever pain we have we want to uh, pre- uh, prevent that and then we uh, try to find the cause of that then when we try to find the cause there are so many uh, supportive causes we get if you are uh, hungry you are suffering from hunger you can eat something if you are suffering from cold you can wear warm cloth and uh, fire also helps to remove cold like that we have so many uh, support but these are not uh, 
permanent. So whatever we uh, take as support to remove the uh, suffering, it is only momentary. It is not permanent. So we want we want something permanent. Permanently remove the suffering. So drishte sapartha. It says drishte means existing visible ordinary means. So whatever we have as a, a means to remove suffering or uh, to bring happiness and support our life. So drishte, drishte means what is seen. Sa apartha. Sa means that uh, ignyasa, the enquiry. Apartha, apartha means we can, if we remove, we can remove the enquiry, purposeless, so superfluous. It is not uh, permanent. We cannot re remove suffering completely forever with all these uh, means seen in the ordinary life. So, therefore, again it, again we have the jinyasa. We are not satisfied with the life. Like uh, even in our life, we can see we have all the means for uh, life. Our life is supported very much. But even then, we are not satisfied. There is unsatisfaction feeling always. Now why it is so? We want to know, uh, know something new, uh, we want to uh, do something new and get something new. You always uh, have inquiry to find out something new. And we have no satisfaction and we are unhappy with the, all the means what we have. So therefore, it is clear that we cannot remove the suffering completely with the worldly means. We have to find some other, uh, something else. So therefore it says, Drishte Sapartha Chet. Neikanta Atyanta Dovabhavat. Oh, it is said that uh, it is not because of the absence of saturnity and permanency. Ekanta da atyanta do abhava. We want to remove the suffering for ever. If we don't want suffering in our life at any cost. Therefore, this means whatever we use is not uh, sufficient. We need something more, something permanent. The, because of absence of saturnity. The saturnity, what we, uh, saturnity in the causes of uh, this uh, uh, suffering and we want to remove those causes completely, forever. But this means, the ordinary means, is not saturn and they are not permanent. So, naikanta atyanda dobha. Atyanda means completely. Completely we cannot remove. Therefore, that uh, enquiry remains. The desire to know the jitnyasa again remains. We want to something more. So then, mostly nowadays, people come after this level of life. They suffer, uh, they earned uh, much and then uh, after earning also they suffered and then uh, after suffering uh, they found, uh, they found all those uh, means of life, uh, what, uh, what we say as ordinary life or worldly uh, life, material life. So they, they are not satisfied with that, then they, they comes to spiritual life. So spiritual life is also uh, like now, uh, actually they don't know what is spirituality is, but they think uh, this is something extraordinary. This is something extraordinary, you will get uh, some special uh, you know, uh, experiences, so you will be more happy in the world. 
So they want worldly life in one side and other side spiritual life. And then uh, somehow they uh, try to manage both uh, like that they are trying to live. But it's not possible because the uh, worldly life has another uh, what you say the cause and effect relation and the spiritual life has different cause and uh, effect relation. So it cannot go together. Why? Because physically when we see both has the same because we need a body, mind, all those things for worldly life as well as for spiritual life. But the cause and effect, cause and effect means the relation um, uh, with the uh, objects is different. In worldly life, the objects are enjoyable and the spiritual life just opposite of that. The object are, objects are not enjoyable. So they are giving suffering. The objects are giving suffering. And the worldly life, objects are giving enjoyment. So this difference is, is a very uh, you know, fundamental difference. So from there it starts. Because when you see <coughs> the outside objects are giving suffering, not enjoyment, then the spiritual life starts. It means you want to go beyond this worldly objects. Or you want to know the reality of life or reality of the world. Now you see the uh, as the ordinary life in the worldly life. We don't need to know the reality of the life. What is the need of to know the reality of life? No need. We only know how we can get, how we can earn money, how we can earn fame and no, all this, this much you must know. Then the worldly life is uh, complete. We don't need to know the reality of the life. We don't need to know reality of anything. Anything, whatever you know, we, we just you need to use all the objects and uh, go with that, that's all. Then the worldly life is there. And once you start to inquire about the reality of life or anything. Obviously, you are out of world. It means you have no, you are not fit for world in life. Because you are always asking what is the, what this is, why this is, why, what is the, oh, so all these questions, then the first thing what happened in the family will be, you will be divorced. <laughs> so, so, yes, I am telling the truth. Therefore, there it means what people think, what, what people believe, that you have to follow, that's all. You don't ask uh, too many questions, so then it is gone. So when the question comes, even uh, the children, if they ask question, no? a parents say, no, no, you don't ask too many questions, you go and study, this is all nonsense. Why you are asking so many questions? Because I used to ask many questions, my parents and uh, my relatives. They were uh, very afraid of me when I go there, just to uh, you know, they will ask so many questions like that. So, you see, the questions actually, it is, a, it is a form of development, development of intelligence. That we are thinking something uh, beyond this, what is believed. So the what we believe and we follow, that is okay. That is uh, for the sake of uh, uh, managing the society, you need to do the, all those. But uh, you are inside when you ask questions. It's a development of brain. So similarly, here the Jitnyasa starts. So then he asks, so what is the permanent solution for the suffering? I don't want ordinary uh, uh, um, uh, solutions or uh, these visible solutions, drishtartha. I want a permanent solution. Then comes Sankhya philosophy as well as Vedanta philosophy, all other philosophies. So in the first Kariga, here Sankhya, uh, the Ishwara Krishna summarizes or uh, is giving uh, a statement on the 
purpose of this test book. This is Sankhya Sutra, the first sutra also, the similar sutra we have. Adhatrivida Dukkha Atyanda Divritti Ratyanda Purushartha. Sankhya Sutra, it is not there in your test book. So based on that sutra, he made this karika. So Trivida Dukkha Atyanda Divritti Atyanda Purushartha. That is the last Purushartha. The achievement of the, what you say, whatever you want to achieve in your life, the achievement of uh, life, that is called Purushartha, that if you can permanently remove this suffering. Now, if you want to permanently remove the suffering, we must know where we have suffering. From which means, which objects we have suffered. If you think about that, the main cause of suffering is this physical body. Because we have physical body, therefore we have mind, therefore we have intellect, therefore we have to do all these things. So birth is the first cause of suffering, birth, this physical body. Now if you want to get rid of suffering permanently, what would be the uh, solution? You don't have birth. <laughs> so if there is no birth, so then there is no suffering. This is all very clear. So therefore, now uh, if we Okay, anyway, anyway we got this birth, we have this physical body. Now, we don't want to get another birth. So, Punar Janma, the rebirth, again we don't want to take birth. We don't have, I want to give suffering to a mother and father and family and uh, do all these things. You see how much they suffered to bring up a child like then after, when uh, they are ready to give back, <laughs> they, they leave the family and go. Then again they suffer. Oh, they, uh, you know, we did so much and he just left for his fault. Uh, they are so selfish, like that. So all these uh, sannyasins and sadhakas, they are, no, they are selfish. Mm. They, they don't think about others. They have no affection with others. So therefore, they just leave the family and they go for their own happiness, their own enjoyment. If they think about us, what they think? They went for their own enjoyment. What is that? So like we, uh, they, we leave the family and came to Himalayas and living here. And when they call and ask, how are you there? Oh, we are all very fine, very happy here. So then what do you think? <laughs> then you know, it means that you went for your enjoyment, you are happy there, and we are suffering here. Okay, so uh, this is the reality. We want to get rid of this uh, rebirth, you should stop karmas, doing karmas. No new karma. Okay, we don't do new karma, we don't create new karma. So then what about the old karmas? So old karma we can uh, uh, destroy with uh, uh, sadhana and do some sadhana and some prayers and something. Then the old karma is gone, the old sanjita karma is gone. Then uh, there is no karma, then there is no birth. This is the karma theory what we say. We will learn all this karma theory, how the karma works and all those things. And this will come here. So this way the first sloga is just introducing, making us aware about what we are and where we are. So we have these three types of suffering and we want to get rid of this suffering. Now the next karika, the second karika, we will just chant the second karika. It is giving, uh, it is giving another point, like the a visible means or the worldly objects cannot remove your suffering. Similarly, the 
objects in the heaven cannot remove the vessel. Adrishta. Adrishta means uh, we have some objects as drishta visible and unvisible. So adrishta. Adrishta the spiritual means. So spiritual means here it means uh, the heavenly objects. The objects are well, objects in the heaven. They cannot they are they, they cannot remove your suffering. So therefore we don't do uh, any karma to go to heaven. So once we go to the heaven, we cannot study all this there. Because there you, you don't uh, you don't get uh, any acharya, any test book or anything like that. You just go there and leave and whatever uh, enjoyment uh, you get there, take it and come back. <coughs> Study and sadhana and all other uh, means of uh, the sadhana we can do only in this world, in, in this uh, earth. Therefore, please don't try to do karmas for heaven. So there the second karika says. Drishtavadanusravikaha So now we completed two karigas. So practice chanting of these two karigas. Try to memorize if it is possible. Otherwise, at least uh, chanting should come. I mean, you should. Uh, uh, read it repeatedly and then the words words are clear but uh, the tune and the chanting should come so the second karika the meaning of second karika we will see tomorrow om purnamatah purnamidam purna